Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be causing a little bit of a havoc. We're going to be combining some of the biggest black holes we've discovered in the universe with some of the largest stars known to us that we've discovered in our own galaxy. For example, stars like UI Skutai. So, let's actually play around and find out what's going to happen when the largest star we've discovered meets the largest black hole we've discovered. Welcome to What The Math. And so, unfortunately, things can kind of froze here and it looks like my computer cannot process this right now, so we're going to have to create a completely new simulation and so let's start a new simulation here, and what we're going to do is we're going to place the largest black hole right in the center here, and we're going to actually make it a little bit more realistic. So the largest black hole in the game is not actually the same size as the largest black hole in real life. Um, the largest, according to uh, some of the articles I've discovered online, was known as S5001481. The thing about this black hole though is that we're not exactly sure how big it is because it's so far away, but we think its total mass is approximately 40 billion masses of the sun, which makes it dramatically larger than our own uh, central supermassive black hole known as the Sagittarius A star, which is only about 4.3 million um, masses of the sun. In other words, it's like 10,000 times more massive than the one in our own solar, uh, in our own galaxy. So uh, this particular black hole it is kind of theoretical still. We know it exists, but we just don't really know what size it uh, actually has or, or what mass it has. But in terms of size, if it actually existed, it would be close to about 1,600 astronomical units in radius. That's ridiculously large. Now, it's currently not entirely certain if this is how big it is of course but we know that it's uh coming from a very very bright blazer a concept that, that i covered in one of the previous videos and we know that this black hole um very likely contains or is one of the brightest objects in the night sky so how big is it well let me just uh place this particular object in our own solar system just so you can see and so here it is, you can kind of see the outline of this black hole, and right in the middle right there, right in the middle is our own solar system. That is how entirely tiny we are in comparison to this enormous black hole. So, what do you think would happen if we were to start placing some of the largest stars we've discovered around this object? Well, let's actually find out. We're going to leave some of the planets from our own solar system in there. We're just going to decelerate time a little bit. And let's actually start with the largest star we've discovered, UI Skutai. So uh, we're going to take UI Skutai and place it in orbit around this black hole. Look how tiny UI Skutai is. Don't forget, this is actually uh, a humongous star. It's about eight astronomical units. It essentially reaches all the way from uh, the center of our sun to basically uh, Jupiter. It's an enormous star, but it's super tiny in comparison to this tremendously large black hole. And this black hole just completely destroyed our solar system. And okay, so, so far this is actually surprisingly surviving just fine, but it's moving at a speed of like, what, 210,000 kilometers per second. This is what we would call um, a relativistic speed. At this point, uh, this star is actually acquiring a lot more mass and the time on the star actually passes in slow motion. Which is kind of interesting because this is not something you would see very very often. Alright, how about we place UI Skutai here as well. And the most massive star we know of currently, R136A1. This is a star from the galaxy nearby from the Large Magellanic Cloud. It's a star that's not very big, but it's extremely massive. So here are those giants just kind of orbiting around this tremendously large black hole. But notice how they're not actually being destroyed. A lot of uh, times when I make black holes, or I guess if you make black holes in this game, you'll notice that um, they usually create an accretion disk. And that's because of the tidal forces that break apart these stars. But in this case, 
what's happening is that because this black hole is so so massive um, its tidal forces on the outskirts are actually very low the tidal forces that these stars are experiencing are not very high at all so this black hole can actually have stars orbiting around pretty much like almost on the border and it's going to be very very difficult to create any kind of um, accretion disk for this black hole simply because it's so humongous um, and because of its tidal forces that are very very low which also suggests that its density is extremely low its density is like thousands of times lower um, than even the density of air on our planet earth so if you were to basically place or if you were to fill this whole sphere with air from earth it would create a black hole that would be even more massive than this this is how crazy this this actually is um, so this also means that if you were to pass the event horizon um, in this black hole so let's actually just let's take ui skutai and place it right right next to this black hole so if you were to actually pass the event horizon like it's going to do in a second uh, you would actually not feel absolutely anything there would be no tidal effects you would pass through the event horizon into the black hole normally and would not realize what's happening to you and then as you pass the event horizon things would start changing quite dramatically and chances are that after you pass through that would be the end of you there it is so this is actually very very interesting because first of all unlike smaller black holes if i were to place a small black hole somewhere over here and were to then place a um ui skutai orbiting around this particular black hole you would see that as soon as you place it it's going to start orbiting here and you'll notice that because of the tidal forces this particular black hole will actually start shredding the ui skutai apart it's going to happen anytime anytime now and there you go it kind of just disappears and actually any star you place here around this particular uh, small black hole is going to be very likely shredded apart almost right away because of the tidal effects so here is Betelgeuse and as soon as you place it it's going to very likely lose mass and uh, become much smaller so you can kind of see it's losing mass like crazy but not with a supermassive black hole not with a black hole that's about 1600 astronomical units in size so here no matter what star i place even if it's very very close to this black hole it's going to do just fine it's going to just orbit normally and not get destroyed because the tidal effects are not very strong but this also suggests that this particular blazer that's about 12 billion years um 12 billion light years away from us is very likely filled with these stars and some of these stars as they actually fall into the blazer or uh, into the black hole very likely produce a lot of energy so let's make let me just actually demonstrate this so i'm going to take one of these and make the eccentricity here much much higher until it actually falls into the black hole so this particular star right now is going to be slowly falling into the black hole and as it actually falls into the black hole um it will get shredded apart and will help this black hole release a tremendous amount of energy that is then going to be directed into two directions basically upwards and downwards and these relativistic jets will one day reach our solar system or our planet earth and this is how we know that this particular black hole exists because of these jets that are kind of difficult to demonstrate here but i've talked about them previously in one of the previous videos and so these jets will actually and so these jets are actually the reason why we have these objects called blazers and quasars because they're essentially like uh little lighthouses pointing their lights at at us and we can see them because they're very very bright and their brightness is determined or created by absorbing quite a lot of matter uh from the from the galaxy that this black hole is part of as a matter of fact there's at least one supermassive black hole we've discovered that's maybe a little bit smaller than this one and that's like a black hole inside a phoenix cluster um several billion light years away from us this particular black hole is about half the size in terms of mass and um half the size in terms of size as well but um it actually absorbs something like 60 million masses of sun per year 
Now, don't forget, our own black hole in, in the Milky Way galaxy is only 4.3 million um, masses of, of the sun. And this particular black hole absorbs like 15 times that in a single year, which is absolutely crazy. And so, well, that's really it. That's all I wanted to say in this video. I kind of wanted to show you some of the biggest black holes and also some of the most uh, massive ones out there. But also wanted to show you what would happen if you were to place the largest black hole we currently are aware of with the largest star we currently are aware of. And the answer to that is, well, not very much, but the star would obviously fall into the black hole and get completely annihilated. And anyway, thank you so much for watching and hopefully you learned something about black holes um, and specifically the most massive black holes we have out there. And hopefully now you know what would happen with the star that's about to collide with this supermassive black hole that's several times bigger than it. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. And don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this video with, with people that actually enjoy watching space videos and want to learn through video games. And maybe even consider supporting the channel on Patreon. I'll see you later. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.